Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ryan and Mom. And then also Mom. Happy birthday to you. Oh, look at this birthday. That's a quality time right there. Oh my god. <laughs> Too much love. I don't know how to do it all. Why are we doing all this stuff? She was uh, one of the most heartfelt people I've ever known and probably ever will know. And so she was good at passing that on to other people. You couldn't help but just want to be a better person when you would talk to her because you would see like how much you appreciated that in a, that character in a person and then you would just be like, I want to be like that too. So then you couldn't help but have that rub off on you and then strive to be that person. Ultimately, thinking about others uh, and, yeah, she, she existed, she spent her life trying to make life better for others, um, whether it was for her family or for her friends, for her kids, like, she just was always full of generosity. <laughs> Uh, she's just, you know, wonderful and loving, and, um, you know, she really wanted to be with me, I wanted to be with her, we wanted to have kids, um, it was good. She absolutely loves her kids, kids above everything else, and of course, her husband, she was just a very loving person. And she always spread the love, like, for birthdays, she knew those were important, she'd go all out for birthdays, and, uh, she do a lot to make you feel loved. I love my mom. Aren't you a savage? I'm a savage. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my mom. She just turned 70. And, and guess what she did like literally two days ago? She went with me and Sabelle to Six Flags, dude. And she hit every roller coaster in the park in one day. What a Bruh. Whoa. <laughs> she's the she's a beast. And Nicholas made me think we were just gonna go on one ride. I know you like plants, I Mom. You like plants, and this one won't die. Yeah, it won't die. <laughs> Cynthia was born in Redwood City, California. She grew up on a ranch and volunteered for a hospital in high school before going to San Jose State for textile arts. Mom was passionate about many things. She liked to do bead making. She liked to do glass blowing, she liked to do art, drawing, sewing, and she was passionate. Um, she went, she took some college classes for art. In fact, I got one of the things, she gave me one of those things that she made in college, which was really cool. This, oh, you made that? My assignment in college was to take two unlikely things and put them together and make something out of it. So I took cloth and a brick, and I made this from scratch. I made the pattern and everything. Let's see the bottom of it. This is the other side. This is like bookends, is what it is. Oh, cool. Going through Cynthia's things, I did not realize how much time she spent on, on a lot of hobbies I didn't even know about. Like, I find books about some craft thing that have a hundred post-it notes in them you know, about the stuff she was thinking about while reading this book. And, you know, she has, you know, a thousand books. For many years, she worked as a public school first grade teacher in California. She met her first husband, Richard, and had two sons, Michael and Ryan. In 1972, Cynthia and Richard opened their own preschool, the Cinderella Nursing School in San Carlos. They lived in Alaska for two years, where she worked for a program to help abused women. In 1981, they opened another preschool, the Cozy Corner Children's Center in Ukiah, California. It was open for 18 years. Um, you know, she spent her, um, her younger years as a, as a preschool teacher, and she was always the rule breaker because she would teach these kids just advanced things. She would teach preschoolers how to read and it was always for the benefit of the kids, right? I know she just liked it. You know? 
And I, I don't know at what point she found out about self-pronouncing alphabet, SPA, which is a terrific way to teach reading. And so at some point she found out about that, and then, and then she was, there was no stopping her. She was going to teach every preschooler to read, you know, and, and she did. And it was great. So um, Lucretia was our babysitter from mm-hmm. basically birth, and um, now she's one of our dearest family friends. And right, it was about seven months after we were born, she was also pregnant, and she went into labor with her daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and she and her husband were separated, and no one was in the hospital with her and mom just showed up and she was like someone's got to be here to like help you with this baby and celebrate you and um she stayed with her for like the entire labor it was it was a long labor it was like 12 or 14 hours or so um i remember lucretia was telling me this right after she died like how important that was to her that you know as as an new immigrant in the U.S. and someone who didn't really have a lot of connections in Nevada or anyone to be in the hospital with her while she was in labor like that meant so much to her and she delivered her baby um, and named her daughter after our mom. Cindy's named after your mom and then I remember thinking dang there's a lot of people named after mom. And mom always had like that kind of an impact on people and that's why she had preschools because she didn't do it just because she thought she was like some cash cow. She just loved kids and she loved inspiring them to be great people. In 1996, Cynthia moved to the Bay Area and taught first grade in San Jose. She worked on a master's degree in educational technology and almost completed it. In 1998, Cynthia married her second husband, Ted. They had three kids, Elena, Nicholas, and Sibel. And we just went all over the place. So we, one time, we, after Cynthia was teaching at the school district, we went to Big Sur for like three days, three day weekend, we went to Big Sur and stayed in Big Sur Lodge. And we got there and Cynthia brought like a suitcase of work to do, you know, for school. We got there, Cynthia fell asleep on the bed and basically slept for three days. I mean, she was exhausted, and she just slept and slept and slept and slept, and we would get up and, you know, uh, go and eat dinner and come back, and she would go to sleep again, you know, and <laughs> it was really something. Um, but we did have a lot of fun. <laughs> um, when I was about nine years old, she decided to sign us both up for pottery classes. I have no clue why. I don't remember if I ever went to her and went, Mom, I want to learn pottery, but... That was just something we decided to do. And mom is an artist, of course. She took to it like a fish to water. <laughs> and I, in my nine-year-old clumsiness, was terrible at it. But for some reason, I just was like, didn't care, which was really weird at the time because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I, I was then as well. And I remember mom saying like, this is really strange that you're not like beating yourself up about this. <laughs> but I, I have to thank her for that because I think she saw that in me, saw that like hypercriticalness mm-hmm. and knew that she had to provide an outlet and maybe that was the reason why. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't really know if she intended that, but she certainly recognized it and understood how important it was. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really hard to be that like perceptive about people. Mm-hmm. I don't know, and that's still something I think about from time to time where, like, I'm getting really frustrated with myself. I'm like, well, this is just my pottery, you know? <laughs> it's okay if I'm not good at it. I can just have fun. And right. that was, I don't know, that was a gift she gave. Mom wanted us to be able to follow our dreams. And so she was the type of parent that would want to fill us with the courage and build us up rather than maybe some other people that kind of tear their kids down. Mom mom wanted us to have the courage to chase our dreams. That was like very important to her. So she would always tell us throughout our life, you know, you can do it, you can do whatever you want in life. You know, even if you want to do anything in life, we'll support you with whatever you want to do. We don't want to tell you to do this or that, which is cool. And part of the way she helped us do that was like, for me, she got me a drum set when I was six years old. And she, I didn't even know what a drum set was. I was just always, I was just banging on stuff. 
And she was like, you know what, I'll just get you like a drum set. And I didn't even know what that was. And so I got it for Christmas and it was awesome. And drumming turned out to be one of the things I'm naturally gifted at. So she really helped us with those kind of things. What was your favorite thing about her? Hmm. <laughs> her hugs. There was nothing like a mom hug. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Um, that feels like a very simple answer, but... Yeah. My favorite thing about her was that, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different things that are awesome about, about mom, but one of the things that used to always just, she would always be able to put me in a good mood. You know, if I'd be sad and I have something go wrong at school, and I'd be sitting there, uh, bummed out, trying to talk about it. And she used to do this thing where she would put, turn on her music and she always would play like whatever music she was into at the time, like Celine Dion or whatever it was. And um, she'd grab my hand, she'd grab my wrist and then she would just start dancing with my wrist while I'm in the car upset. And I just look at her like, are you serious right now? And I'd try to be, miserable i try so desperately hard to be miserable but her joy was just so overbearing that i couldn't help but just start laughing at her and be like what are you doing right now and i start laughing i get in a good mood and then she'd be in a good mood and she would just be grabbing my hand and doing this until i literally started laughing like she would if i pulled it away she'd just grab it and keep doing it sometimes she'd do it for like 20 minutes until i was like happy her ability to just make people happy i guess is 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 uh is something that I think everybody was drawn to her about, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't be around mom and not be happy. She just made you happy. You know, whether you're her child or whether you're just a normal person, she just made you feel good about yourself. In 2013, Cynthia found out she had ovarian cancer. We just had to deal with it. Uh, you know, it, was, it was sad, but you know, we just, we're just going to deal with it. We're just going to do what we have to do. Well, she was very uh, just good about it. You know, she, she could endure a lot of pain, and she didn't complain, and she just, just went with it. Um, and you know, we, we I went with her to all the appointments. We I took notes. You know, and uh, it seemed like it was we were in good hands. Uh, so, yes, yeah. As for especially being, she was just a couple of weeks away from dying the, when we got to the doctor in, in L.A. You know, in 2013. So uh, she really got seven more years after that. So. For seven years, she fought through excruciating amounts of pain to be with us. Like seven years of chemo when doctors say it's not even worth it to have chemo that means a lot of pain is what that means and she did it for us she wanted to be there for us that's a very yeah. selfless thing to do like i remember um linda when she visited us for the last time it was around her birthday and mom kept freaking out because she didn't have a gift she didn't have a, the right gift for linda and she's like no i bought something for her i don't know where it is because you know she would buy gifts and <laughs> way in advance because she just knew that person would love it and like just the fact that this was a visit because she was dying and her first thought was oh I have to make my friend's birthday special <laughs> like who does that yeah know. yeah this year's the first year without mom on mother's day it really hurts and if there's one thing I would tell her it would just be that I love her so much and I just appreciate everything she did for us, really. I mean, she, she gave us a lot. She, our whole world that she built, she built for us. Like the people in our life, people like yeah. Lucretia, who we love, our whole family, our, all of our cars, the house, it's all a result of what mom had a vision like for our lives to be great. And she passed it on to us, so. I'm so grateful to her for that, and I miss her. I wish she was here to share it with us. I mean, every time I 
like our birthday just happened, our 21st birthday. I wanted to call mom and I wanted to say, mom, that's my, and I couldn't do it. And it was so sad to not be able to share that moment with my mom. And I miss her a lot, but she did so much for us. Yeah. Yeah. And if she was here, man, on Mother's Day, dude, I mean, I, I have dreams all the time where I think I dream that she's back somehow. Mm-hmm. She's never going to happen because she's dead, but. And I'm and I'm and then when I see her, I'm like I just give her a big hug and a kiss on the cheek, and I'm like, Mom, I missed you so much, you know. I'm so glad you're back. And then I wake up and I'm like, Dang, sucks, dude. And yeah, it's the first Mother's Day without Mom. I just uh, I just wish she was here to share it with us. Really, that's it. Just appreciating how wonderful it was to be with her. And uh, you know, we had we had little fights and things like married couples do, but but it was good. Um, I'd probably say you did an excellent job, you know, I'd stand up and hit her with a golf clap, <laughs> <laughs> start slow, build some momentum, just like the movies, and then a hundred people magically would appear behind me that she's all affected and then they'd all be doing the same thing. <laughs> I would say I see everything you've done for us everything you did and I know the love and the passion that went into it and I hope that I can bring half of that into my own life into the ones I love and just thank you for being there when it was terribly hard for you to be there. Yeah. And I see all that. (laughs) I know everybody's mom's awesome. I get it, but like, you know, she was a one of a kind. It's like winning the lottery of moms, I felt like with her. You know, because she's just like, she taught you all the important things, basically, how to be a good person, you know, because like, I feel like there's so many people in this world that might have a lot, but they feel lost because they just lose sight of what is really important. And that's like, who who is basically is being proud of who you are as a human. And she teaches you how to stay in, she taught me how to stay in line with being, you know, being true to myself and and being a good human being and always having that be the most important thing over everything else. If there's one thing I could tell mom, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I, I just love her. I want to tell her I love her, how much she means to me. Mom always made sure that we felt loved. That was like something that she knew was important and something that she was so gracious to let us know throughout our whole childhood, your love so much. And I just wish, you know, I could tell her the same. Like the the amount of love she gave us, it, was, it, it made us so happy. It made our childhood so great. And I just wanna, you know, I just wanna make her happy, but she's not here, so. Yeah. But I know she's watching. I know she's like proud of us. That's all she wants. She just wants us to be happy. That's why she's a very gracious, generous earth mother. She always said, she's like, I'm the earth mom. That's what I am. I'm a goddess. I'm the goddess of mom. <laughs> it, it, she is. It makes sense. Like, if there would be anyone to have that title, it would be her. Hi, sweetheart. This is mom. I just saw you called me. I'm calling you back. I love you, honey. I miss you so much. Miss your beautiful, smiling face and your sparkle. Okay, call me. Bye. I'm by my phone now. Bye.